So this video is going to act as sort of like a behind the scenes reflective analysis of my new short film critique. It's a film I made completely solo, all by myself. No one really helped me. It was just me, alone, with some camera and some lights and a quick story I came up with. And in many ways, this short film was the product of me learning a bunch of valuable lessons. Namely, the lesson that filmmaking is a collaborative effort. It's not a solo thing. Yes, you can make a film all by yourself. At the end of the day, filmmaking is a team effort. You are part of a team, it is collaborative, you are bouncing ideas off each other. But also, although you are trying to tell a story with your unique voice as a director, as a performer, as a cinematographer, you're also working together to achieve a certain vision, a certain look, a certain feel, a certain sound. And whilst you can do all that solo, you need other experts in your field. Because, I mean, although I like to dabble in cinematography, I'm no expert. Although I like to act and perform, I am no acting expert. In fact, I kind of want to take acting classes just so I can get better at it. And whilst I say I specialise in writing and directing and editing and cinematography, at the end of the day, I'm still learning. And even with Critique, a solo effort, I learned a bunch of things. I learned that I hate directing and acting and shooting or doing all of that at once. I hate doing that. I need a cinematographer to do all this because although I like acting and directing, and in many ways, acting and directing can be a similar thing because you work with your actors to, you know, achieve a certain performance. And if you are acting in the scene, you're basically one of the actors, you guys are helping to drive the story, but just under your direction as an actor. And whilst in the future I wouldn't mind being a director who is also in front of the camera, if I'm in front of the camera, I need a cinematographer behind me who knows what they're doing, who can capture my best angles, who can also tell the story whilst I am in front of the camera. Because although I think I did a good job with some of the shots, I mean, I do love some of the shots I got, it's just that at the end of the day, I hated doing all the setup. I hated, you know, constantly looking in the monitor above me going, okay, is this good? Am I in focus? Because <laughs> that's that's one thing too. Focus is a massive issue when you're doing this all by yourself because you don't have a lot of stand-ins. If you're doing this completely solo, you are just relying on the peaking function on either your monitor or your camera. But also, cinematography is hard. It's not something that you can easily just do in a split second. It requires lighting. It requires, you know, patience. It requires you to look at the scene and going, ah, oh, do I like the way the light is reflecting? Nope. Do I like the way the lighting is telling the story? Nope. Yes. Okay, we got it. Cool. Okay. Get ready to, you know, record everybody. And when you're in front of the camera, it's really hard to do that. You are just stuck there kind of at the mercy of your composition you've done all this you're hoping it all looks good and so you're kind of just relying on you know you just delivering a good performance and that it looks good in post and another thing about options in post is that if you are the cinematographer and the actor it's very hard to detect eye line there are much better performance takes of me sitting down at the desk critiquing the other version of me over there but because my eye line is horrifically off for the most part, I'm pretty much just staring down the barrel of the lens. It doesn't work, and so it breaks the immersion, and so, unfortunately, I had to go with a lesser take. And that's kind of just how it goes when you're doing this solo, because you don't have anyone to tell you, no, you're looking in the wrong direction. You just kind of have to eyeball it. And whilst at the end of the day it's a fun little challenge, I just... I didn't enjoy this experience making this film. Now, why did I do this film completely solo and not get in some help? Well, that's just because in the summer I was going through a bit of a burnout phase, I wasn't really as enthusiastic about filmmaking, a lot of plans I had just kept getting delayed and just at the end of the day most of the stories I want to tell now do require some semblance of budget or a collaboration, I need a bigger team and just I wanted to get back to telling simpler stories and so I thought okay let's just make a quick you know three minute short film just to get back into the groove just to see if you actually enjoy this again. And don't get me wrong I love filmmaking, I really do, it's just that filmmaking is tough. No matter how mad a film story makes it, you, you still have to appreciate the effort and the craft that went into it because it takes a lot of time and effort. Yes, I may have a go at bigger companies like Disney and Marvel Studios and DC for telling lesser stories or not fulfilling their potential, but they have millions of dollars and hundreds and thousands of people working on each project. I am either working with like a group of 10 or much smaller or just by myself and just it's hard. It, it really is. I'm not the standard of excellence. I am just learning. I am finding my footing. And so this short film in many ways kind of humbled me in a way. It made me go, yes, filmmaking is hard. And also you can't do this alone. Now, is this me going against solo filmmaking entirely? No. If you are young and learning and want to get into filmmaking, go by yourself. Maybe grab a friend or two. Go make a film. I'm not advocating no budget or low budget filmmaking is a bad option. No. 
you need to do that because you need to learn your your directing style, your voice, you need to learn how to tell a story. And you need to do that with experience and practice. But if you're going to go do that, here's an important tip. Do not tell the first story that comes into your head. Because this film in many ways is sort of a first idea that came into my head, sort of. I say that because I had come up with this idea vaguely before, but I hadn't fully realized it. And also because I wanted to make this film in a quicker time frame, I would say, I didn't focus as much on the story. Like, for example, an important line in the film is when my character goes, oh yeah, you're going for the Blade Runner 2049 look. At the end of the day, no, I'm not. I'm going for the Dune look. Because although, yes, I color grade the opening scene to look kind of orangey and red like Blade Runner 2049, the overall thematic idea of, you know, having a dream that, you know, it turns out to being an idea into the future or whatever, it's very much a Dune thing, and yet I didn't capitalize on that. Like, I was just sitting there editing going, why did I say Blade Runner? This is very clearly Dune. I very clearly have a shot of me waking up, looking at a sort of premonition or a vision. It's heavily inspired by Dune. Why did I say Blade Runner? And yes, I could have reshot the scene, but I didn't want to. Either out of sheer laziness, but also having to redo the lighting setups again, just... I was feeling a bit lazy, I won't lie, and part of that was because I had the sole responsibility of making this film. And look, I don't hate this film, I like the work I made, it's just that there are a couple of corners I sort of decided to cut. Like, for example, the visual effects at the beginning, I did the best to salvage what I could, but I mean, I am no visual effects expert. I respect the craft a lot, but, oh boy, I, I can't get into it, no matter how much I try to do green screening, just... It always ends up looking weird, like you can see the grain behind me, or you can see elements of my hair sort of getting clipped out, just, it, I'm not proficient in visual effects, and nor do I claim to be. It's a thing that I respect, but at the end of the day, I'm not a visual effects artist, and I don't really want to be either. In many ways, I kind of just love practical effects and on-set locations, like Denis Villeneuve, although he loves visual effects, he is really good at using it, he also loves shooting on location, and that's sort of a thing I want to do in the future, just, actually getting real sets and real scenery and actually telling a story, making a big grandiose film that is on location and looks right. Because when you do it in post-production, it doesn't look right. I mean, I did the best with what I could, but it's just, it, it doesn't look right. You can tell it's on a green screen and just visual effects. And yes, whilst I have my own little critiques and complaints about my own film, at the end of the day, I still really like the story. In many ways, the situation was based off a couple of conversations I've had with my friends. One time, a friend of mine was critiquing a script and he started complaining about the love interest being a bit too mean and I got a bit defensive being like, what do you mean? I made her quirky and flirty and fun. Yes, she can be mean, but she doesn't mean it. That when the actor is portraying that scene, there will be, you know, uh, playful and fun and flirty. But he was just like, yeah, but she's a bit too mean. And I was like, huh? Uh, that was a complaint I didn't get at the time, and to be honest, I still really don't. And then the other conversation, well, it was more of an experience, really, is when my friend came up with this really cool idea, we really liked it, and he continued to develop it, and it was really cool, and we got all excited to do it, and then just, he dropped it, and we were kind of like, oh, uh, why? It was a good story, why didn't you keep at it? Not just singling out my friend, I mean, every filmmaker goes through that. You come up with an idea, you really like it, you keep working on it, and then you just kind of stop doing it because the idea sort of fizzled out. And that's pretty much what inspired the climax of the film, that conversation between the two versions of himself. That, that is what it's meant to be. The film is kind of sort of inspired by Enemy by Denis Villeneuve, where it's the film where there's two Jake Gyllenhaals. It's a really good film. Watch it. It's, it's, it's so good. But obviously, the one sitting at the desk in the red beanie is meant to symbolize the subconscious. It's meant to be that writer's internal thought of, yeah, I like this. Here's just a thing that could be better. Here's a thing that you can improve upon. And then obviously, the other version of himself, which is standing there listening in to all the feedback, just kind of gets overwhelmed by it and turned off from the idea and deletes the project. That is very much an experience I've had. And I I think the way I told it was effective for the most part. I tried to give this short film a little bit of a narrative thrust because some short films are either just a concept or an experience. They're not really telling a narrative. Granted, you can't really tell a long narrative in a short film, but there's a way to at least give some semblance of a character change or growth. And that's mainly what I tried to do with the climactic scene of this film. Also, add a little bit of comedy because, I mean, comedy doesn't hurt. So in terms of kit I used to shoot this film, I shot it on the Sony 24mm G lens and the Sony 50mm G lens. Primarily the Sony 50mm G lens. Also, I shot it on the Sony... 28 to 70 millimeter zoom lens. 
Uh, I don't know the specific specs, but yeah, it's a zoom lens that I sort of bought with the camera. I shot it also on the Sony a7 III. The sound was done with the Rode NTG4+, Plus, and it was sound recorded onto the Zoom H5 sound recorder. I'm not sponsored by any of the companies I've just mentioned, this is just the kit I used to make this film. And for the most part, I like how most of the film looks. I mean, there are certain shots that obviously if I had a focus pillow or someone else behind the camera, I could have nailed the focus tack shot, but hey, you win some, you lose some. Trial and error, that's what filmmaking, especially in your early days, is all about. I also edited and color graded the film in DaVinci Resolve 17, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Overall, the filmmaking, editing, post-production process was pretty simple. It did take me quite a while to get this done, although I shot this in two days. I was being quite lazy because throughout the summer I just had a lack of motivation to do anything, and so I could have made this film quite quickly, but I just didn't because I just... I didn't set myself a deadline, and so I kind of just did it whenever I felt like it. Like, I think I shot this film in early September. I could be wrong, but yeah, it took a while for me to actually get this finish. And as I mentioned before, that was primarily because I was going through a bit of a burnout phase. I was also going through a bit of a creative crisis, we'll say. Like, I didn't know if I wanted to do filmmaking anymore. I don't know if I wanted to do writing. I don't know if maybe I should have just quit altogether. It, I was at that stage of just... What's the point? How are you gonna, like, you know, evolve in this industry if you don't have any money? But that is the pessimist in me saying that. That's not what I'm saying. You don't always just need money to make a good film. Just make the film with what you can. That That's pretty much. Just, if you can't tell a big fantasy epic or a big sci-fi epic with the money you have, don't do it. Save the money and tell a much smaller story. Also, do it with some friends or colleagues that you love working with because at the end of the day, filmmaking is a collaborative effort and it's just much more fun to make a film with other people than just all by yourself. But that's pretty much all I have to say today. I hope you guys enjoy Critique and you enjoyed this reflective analysis behind the scenes video and hopefully it inspired you to make something, whether it's a film, a book, a piece of art, I hope you guys are inspired and motivated to go out and make something. But also, don't just go out and make something by yourself. Have some other people around because it's always great when you're doing something with other people too. But yeah, that's pretty much all for me. Like, like, subscribe, follow me on social media. It's all down in the description. And until we meet again, I'll see you guys next time.